Oh man, awesome cast. Those guys are fantastic. But what if you want to talk about wrestling? Well, we've got you covered. Right here on the Sorgatron Media Network, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It might just be the best show anywhere, ever. Go find out. SorgatronMedia.com Hey guys, coming up on Awesome Cast, we've got a great lineup as we talk about implants, Facebook security, some fabulous wedding planning on Pinterest, and Skeletor somehow gets in there too. All this and more. Awesome Cast. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 156. We're back in the studio here in Pittsburgh, PA. The lights are on this week. We're not recording on an iPhone yet. Uh, and it's looking like clear skies out in your neighborhoods. Cloudy, dark. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I'm in a basement. Uh, so uh, but with us returning this week, since since we kind of lost her, since we didn't have any power to call her in uh cynthia klosky big big design uh at cynthia klosky on the twitters lady in the internet how you doing i am grand thank you i'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be here this week I, I feel like a leftover lady but hopefully that's still okay <laughs> a little bit a little bit but we wanted to get you on i felt bad we like we were we were just about to get started and gone and uh, but, you know the weather you can't predict maybe, apparently obviously <laughs> maybe the government there was some speculation it happens to Matt Damon, so don't feel bad. It happens to Matt Damon. John Carmen joining us, the social Hello. the social media pirate from uh, at Carmen Avenue and Twitter, AvenueDesignStudios.com. Go and check out his stuff. How are you doing this week? Uh, I'm awesome. Excellent. Excellent. And, of course, with us, Chachi, at Chachi says, insert coin to begin.com, and the fabulous unsung nonprofit news show. This is... The audio listeners have no idea what you're Oh, doing. right. Yes. Hello. Hi. <laughs> awesome. So this is the awesome cast. We like to get geeky, talk about what's awesome on the internet, technology, and whatnot. Uh, you can drop us a line at contact at awesomecast.com. Let us, let us know what you think is awesome. Any comments on anything we discuss here on the show. Uh, you can also hit us up at awesomecast on the Twitters uh, or on Google Plus and Facebook as well uh so let's get right into it uh oh hey also you can find us over over at sorgatronmedia.com for all the past episodes of awesome cast uh we're over on itunes blip tv youtube um stitcher and on your roku de- roku devices uh via the blip tv app i know a lot of you guys are watching us over on there that's really cool that we're uh on a lot of your TVs out there. Uh, so, uh, so like, yeah, let's get with it the way uh, we'd like to. Let's start off with uh, your awesome things of the week. And since we've waited a week to hear this, I want to go over <laughs> to Cindy for hers. I installed this app, actually, before the show today uh, to try kind of start tinkering with it. I didn't get anybody uh, uh, to connect with to play with yet, though. Uh, but you well, this, the, yeah, the app is, um, is Say the Same Thing. Mm-hmm. And so this is created by, by a band, the band OK Go, um, people who what's, I, do you guys you guys might remember you know games better than I do but they were the they did like the soundtrack to some game oh gosh I don't know a decade ago people I, here are probably too I young know, to remember I know more for some of their inventive uh, uh, music videos actually like like the the, the ones where it was um, uh, it were, but they had the big what do you call that machine uh, yeah. Rube Goldberg Rube Goldberg thank you um, and I think didn't they do one with the Mentos and Diet Soda guys yeah and they did the the treadmills and the treadmills, yeah. Yeah, these guys always have really inventive and really, like, it's always, anytime they put out something like this, it's all over my geeky and technology podcast. So we're definitely familiar with OK Go. So so the game is is called Say the Same Thing. Mm-hmm. And it is, um, it's a, it's actually an improv game where two people just say a word at the same time. And then you have to stop and think, what do your two words have to do with each other? And then come up with a word that's in between. Mm -hmm. And then both of you see if that word is the same word. And so it can take several rounds, but eventually you say the same word. And then you feel magical. I played this in the real world. (laughs) Okay. IRL. And it's fun, especially if you know the person. 
if you don't I think know it's probably the person, easier if you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the fun thing is that with the game, you can actually, I mean, you can certainly play it with your friends um, if they have accounts and they and they are, and they friend you. But you can also play it with a complete stranger, and it's kind of awesome to play it with a complete stranger because you, it's, it feels almost impossible. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I've only been able to actually win the game with a stranger like twice. But when I did, it was like, oh my god, we both thought of the same word out of all the millions and billions of words that there are in the English language. So, but it would be more fun to try it with friends. And so I wanted to say, if you, if, if you, everyone who, who signs up and who happens to be listening and who wants to try it, please do um, play with me. So my account is C Klosky, C-C-L-O-S-K-E-Y on the app. It's, I believe, a free app, I think. And uh, sign up and play and let's, let's say the same thing at the same time. I was actually, and also it does connect with your um, uh, with your Facebook and your Game Center on on iOS as well. I, I I think I invited you via Facebook instead of adding you as a as a as a user ID. Oh, oh here it is. I uh, didn't see it, so I'll I'll check so too. I, I've also been ignoring. It's my probably one of those. Th- it's one of those annoying uh, game invite things I, that I always ignore. So uh, so I'll have to insert you different way. Well, that's weird. It gives me a number. Okay. Cynthia, do you have to be on at the same time, though? Do you have to both be using the game at the same time? You do. So that's okay. why I ended up playing with people out in the world who I didn't know, right. because they were on at you know midnight or whenever it was that I tried playing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. So go check that out. Uh, it's uh, but, Go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, so I feel like this is going to be a little bit like, you know, draw some or whatever that game was you know that yeah where it'll have like you know there'll be like five people on it for a while and then there'll be like 10 people on it and then there'll be like five million people on it and then nobody will be on it so let's all get on it now so we can at least ride the wave together (laughs) before it becomes a big thing and then it gets bought by zynga and then they lay everybody off and you exactly yeah hey they got the xbox guy that said the really crappy things at a3 so go them they've got like five of my fraternity brothers too (laughs) wait (laughs) <laughs> um, awesome. Um, so I, I have. Um, I, I'm actually going to move this kind of around a little bit. Uh, I guess this is an awesome thing of the week. It depends on kind of how you look at it. I want to see if I can bring up the article here. Uh, but there is a guy. Uh, you know, we're talking about a lot of wearable technology these days. You know, with our Google glasses and our Fitbits and everything. Uh, but this guy, there he is. Um, he, there's a video here actually of him showing you how to do this. Uh, he developed, he, he worked on a way to make invisible earphones where there are these little magnets that go pretty much like in your ear. And then there is a big copper, um, and actually here's a little bit of that video. Nice stick figure, by the way. Um, so there's a tiny, tiny magnet in your ear and then you wear like kind of a collar of, of copper, uh, wiring and you send the signal like like for uh you know like your mp3 player or something into the copper uh and then that will activate uh the vibrations in the magnets so basically you have this like yeah this, this is a great i don't know why the guy's like has his identity covered up or uh, like this but he's kind of showing how to do it with just like the magnets in your ears if you wanted to do it but he actually went so far as to actually have the magnets implanted in his earlobes so earlobes or behind his ear in his earlobes like you can wear them like earrings in his fleshy earlobe part so it kind of makes sense and i guess it's a similar technology to how uh google glass has the bone conductor and that's how you hear it instead of actual like headphones on those things um so and he said in the article he's talking about you know obviously the obvious thing is i can listen to an mp3 player without without you know headphones so that's kind of cool although I, I wonder how that works with this um you kind of see the caller oh now he went to something else uh and also if you watch through this video when he's doing the the role thing he plays a a rendition of right round baby right round uh that's <laughs> that's kind of fun um but so he's got this big collar, but he he says like I, I think he wants to kind of play with different other aspects of what you could do with this, like you know a uh, 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 directional microphone to, to spy on people and stuff like that. Maybe that's why the guy's face is obviously covered. Uh, but uh, I, I think it, it could have some interesting ideas. You know, um, I mean, you think about all those those spy shows we see where they got the little earpiece or something. I mean, this guy, you know, 
it's pretty much built in at this point and an interesting uh, kind of application. Chachi, maybe this is a, a step towards your, your implantable uh, screen in your arm or something like that, right? I mean, what, I what, disagree. What, no. <laughs> Chachi, when um, what's that? Uh, yeah, actually, the pebble is probably the closest I'm going to come to that so far. Okay. All right. Um, well, what, what do you think of this, uh, the, the idea of these uh, kind of invisible earphones? Yeah. Uh, it, I don't really, it, I don't really like them. Um, my headphones are huge, mm -hmm. uh, and I do that so people know I'm wearing headphones <laughs> and don't try to talk to me. True, true. So, so, it's, so it's more of a it, social I, it, thing at that point. What's that? It's more of a social thing at that point. Right. So that it kind of defeats the purpose. Mm -hmm. But you could like have these things in there to listen to stuff all the time, and then when you wanted everyone to leave you alone, just put a pair of like non-functioning headphones on your head. So the headphones just become the show part of it. Like this is <laughs> just the, this is just the signal, right? But I don't need these, you know. Oh, I got a wireless headset, you know. So uh, well, I have always wanted to be able to just wear a collar that was like a constant set of speakers, so I could you know continually broadcast to just mo mostly me the soundtrack of my life, but still be able to hear <laughs> if a car was coming in, down so, the street and was going to hit. So me, it's kind of like know? it's kind of like when the motorcycles with the radios pass by. So you pass somebody on the street, and I hear you know whatever you're listening to, and say, like, well, oh, oh, they, oh they, it's one of them, you know. Um, that could that could be an interesting concept, but they're all like kind of pointed towards you, huh? That's what I, I would think, love to see is, Cynthia wearing closer, an Elizabethan collar with speakers. <laughs> Elizabethan collar with speakers. <laughs> that, that's how I picture big, it, right? Like a dog a collar, frill, like so you right, can't bite your tail. Some sort, yeah. Like a dog, like those dog collars. You know, those dog don't look yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd probably be easier if you're wearing the dome, um, and people will leave you alone. So that solves child oh, problem. Oh, uh, At that point, because wow. Uh, <laughs> Awesome. Uh, it's it's kind of fun to see uh, people playing with this uh, a, a little bit, though. So, uh, John, do you have an awesome thing of the week? Yeah, my awesome thing of the week is uh, a YouTube account, JB Dubs. Well, it's a guy. He's a, a singer and a dancer. He's actually he's um, uh, a ballet dancer with uh, American Ballet Theater. He's a soloist. Okay. Uh, I mean, I looked this guy up because... He, he dances in his music videos. All the videos involve dancing, and some of them involve him dancing, and sometimes there are other dancers. But the difference between his dancing and, and most other dancing is in the precision that only comes from a trained ballet dancer. And so you could tell right off the bat that this guy is a ballet dancer, is a formally trained dancer. And um, the videos are, are, well, they're super gay, so, you know. <laughs> So just warning. to warn you, I mean, he's wearing high heels in many of them, but it's just awesome. I mean, it's just so impressive what, what this guy has put together on YouTube. And if you just do a YouTube search for JB Dubs, J B D U B S. Okay. Well, I, uh, get I don't know if you want to play a clip or what. But. Yeah, I'll throw it up here. Um, okay, that's probably him. Yeah, you From probably see high heels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um... Awesome. So this is kind of like a concept thing. And here's a little bit for you guys up on video. So this is the uh, JB Dubs uh, Panty Waster. Okay, no. That's, that's Justin Bieber. That's Justin Bieber. This is something else. That was that's Britney Spears gay. and that's a tampon. That, that got weird. <laughs> but what? That got weirder than I expected. I mean, <laughs> that... uh, maybe... I hate my job. Official music video. Okay, that's um, a good one. Either way, I'll put this in the I'll put this in the doc, uh, and so people can check it out. All right, cool. All right, what about you, Chach? Uh, I'm really on board with. Uh, I've already mentioned it once, but I, I'm really on board with Pebble. Mm -hmm. Um, and they announced that it'll be releasing in stores. Um, yeah, so I, I I'm, re I'm really on board with that. They're uh, uh, pretty much as close as. Putting a screen in my arm as I'm gonna get. They're actually getting in like Best Buys and stuff, right? Yeah. So, um, so I, I, I'm really on board with that. Uh, also, I've discovered uh, Marvel Avengers Alliance. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, the only bad part is I, I put it on my iPhone too, mm -hmm. <laughs> my work iPhone, and uh, 
I can't figure out how to get the two games to sync. So I'm further ahead on the computer than I am on the phone. And last I knew, uh, last I knew the um, the apps didn't sync with the Facebook. Like they were completely independent. Well, that's dumb. So. Well, uh, we'll put that in a not so awesome category what, what along is it, with. Uh, what is it about this game? We've had the addiction. We've had the video out there uh, for oh, for fun. Bobby. I mean, this it's kind of. Um, I mean, there's it, it, it. There's not much action to this, if I recall from the little bit I played it. Right. I don't know. It's a turn-based uh, Marvel game. A little bit of RPG kind of stuff, and it's free. Yeah. It's one of those kind of framey kind of games, right? Or like they want right. you, like you would go faster if you bought. I don't know coins or something, whatever the thing is in here. So, um, right. but um, great. I don't know. Facebook games are getting better. And and moving to different platforms. I mean, this right. is kind of the zingification of of these kinds of games, right? And it's yep. something you're actually interested in than just farming, right? So, but uh, and and the not so awesome category uh, for this week, I, I signed up for Google's. Uh, uh, play music service, yeah, the, 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 like uh, Spotify or Pandora type service. Okay, and it broke my Google Play Store. Well, not the not the entire store, but the music. It broke it. Really? Um, I and I don't know if it's the update they installed on my phone for it, mm-hmm. or if uh, just signing up for the service breaks it. <laughs> but anytime I go to to do a search for an artist and actually use the service that I'm in a trial for. Um, it tells me there's no space available, and it will stop working with the rest of the music that I've bought from the store. Well, this isn't, like, in beta or anything, is it? No. Like, oh, well, didn't they have the thing where you could sign up, like, before a certain date and you get a little cheaper, too? Yeah, it's a, it's a trial. Yeah. I mean, it, this is brand new. They just announced this at I.O. Um, so so are you able to use its part of the service, or you can't use any kind of music? I, I, if it's actually on my phone, mm-hmm. I can use it. Okay. If it's something I bought, yeah, I cannot use it. That's messed up. <laughs> um, I can use it on the computer. Yeah. Uh, it works fine on the computer. Yeah. And it's actually a great service because I have as much music as everyone else does. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, yeah. On my phone, can't do. Explain a little bit of uh, what it what it does. Like, how does it compare to like a Spotify? Like, what do you get for uh, you know whatever was it ten bucks a month or eight bucks a month, something like that? It's uh, eight bucks a month, and it's exactly like Spotify. Okay. Um, the only difference is they have more artists than Spotify because okay. it, it's the Android iTunes essentially. Um, so I mean, just as many artists are on it as they are on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, I mean, it's the same thing as Spotify. If you want to listen to an artist, you you do a search for them. Uh, it'll bring up their albums. You can listen to their albums. Mm-hmm. Um, no limits, uh, commercials. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it sounded like a great service until you know it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, and it makes sense because you're in the Google ecosystem already. Right, and. Uh, and it, I found out it, I tried undoing the updates, like I uninstalled the updates and reinstalled them, and it worked for probably I don't know an hour, and then it started doing it again. Mm-hmm. So it, it was. Uh, I'm just like it whatever. is a new service. I you know it's not like Google hasn't had bugs with new services before. Uh, so hopefully that's something they work out here with a few updates. I mean. Family. Well, if it's not fixed by the time my trial is over, they can <laughs> that's to true. My money. That's why they give you the trial, right, to see if it works. You know, and it could be a phone thing too. I mean, I, I, as many problems as you've been having with that thing. I've, no, I've had one problem with it. It was user error. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I reset all of my stuff on the phone. That was my fault. That wasn't the phone's fault. Oh, well, that that was. We talked about that on the show, right? Your uh, yeah. your your reset. <laughs> by yeah. pressing two buttons kind of issue. So that, that's more of an LG thing than, I guess, a, a Google thing then. Right. So, I mean, it, the problems I've had with my phone are user error. It's it's not it's not the phone. So okay. I, I am not that worried about it. All right. Uh, Cindy, you got an article here that you gave us last week uh, about the countdown to Google Reader, which was uh, now it's minus one day. Uh-huh. Uh, how are you recovering from the fallout? I've been using um, Feedly. Mm-hmm. I signed up with it before it really got its like 
transition process over. So then I had to go through this extra step. And so it kind of feels like I'm seeing the same articles several times on different devices right now. Okay. So I'm a little bit down on it, but I'm not completely down on it. I'm still trying largely from inertia because I, I just so don't want to look at other tools. I just want it, I want it to work. <laughs> you know, I did you know? the, when it was first announced, um, I, I went through and I even, I even did a, a quick blog write up of the couple things I kind of poked at, uh, when they first announced it was going under, cause I'm like, okay, I need to move now. Cause if so, I need, I, what, what was it? Two months notice we had, I was like, I yep. want to make sure I'm firmly implanted or something, or if something I don't like, I have the chance to switch um feedly was the first one that felt right and and they came out and said hey we're going to convert everybody we're going to actually replace the api so everybody that was kind of riding on google reader uh can now ride on them so uh -huh. it's been a pretty smooth process i've noticed a little bit of the same articles but i thought that was just a sync error between my devices going from i know but screw that i don't i'm not i'm not down with the sync error <laughs> but you know I, I had that with google reader there's no difference or i had that with flipboard when i was uh porting because that's how i was reading google reader for a good long time was through the flipboard and, and it almost but did you sign up for an account with flipboard because i thought if you signed up with a friend account with flipboard then you didn't have the sync problem now clearly i haven't done it because i can't say no, no, I, I haven't because i well after they cut it out i was like well i'm out of flipboard because i can't import that stuff right. in right uh like flipboard works great for like twitter facebook i still liked it for like the visual kind of going through it uh but otherwise it has to be something like that they've curated i think i don't think it works too well with other feeds like by themselves right so and i well, have the thing that really 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 worked for me was on the ipad using reader with google reader mm -hmm. and so i haven't you know i guess maybe i guess what you're suggesting is that i could use feedly with google reader mm-hmm which feels odd and stupid, but could work. I mean, the thing is that Feedly, Feedly really almost gets there. And it's just this weird kind of syncing problem yeah. that if enough of us bitch about it, so here's me bitching. <laughs> well, um, if enough of us bitch, bitch about it, then maybe, maybe the syncing will work in the future. For as That'd much nice. of a flux of people that, because I think that's, when they, when I remember for, when I first signed up for Feedly, it's when they announced the Google kind of crossover thing they were going to do. And it was slow for like two days. And considering the flux of people they've gotten in there with, because they're the guys that have been in the news for the last two months as like the replacement, uh, I think they've been doing okay. And I think it's one of those things where they're going to kind of iterate and do, you know, they'll, they'll improve things as they go along. I mean, it already seems like it's a little better than two months ago when I first poured it over, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was a little worried because it felt like it was too easy. Like I, I, I'm not. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be still because I never really kind of signed up for Feedly. I'm mostly just doing a Google authorship every time I log in on a device. So I was a little right. worried if I had actually imported myself in, myself in. And uh, Monday morning, luckily, they had not yet shut down Reader, and I got in there. And I think you could still go in there in Google Takeout and do the uh, export. So, yeah, I think uh, that was true. They, it was really, they gave us like a day's grace period. I saw your tweets about that. You know, am I in, am I not in? It was really hard to tell. But they had said, like, if you, like, again, I signed up for Feedly, like, right away. Yeah. Um, to switch it over. And they have been really informative in their emails that they've sent out. Like, here's what we're doing, and here's mm -hmm. when you need to migrate. And they kind of said along the way, uh, you're, we're just going to stick with the Google login. Don't worry about that part. Yeah. But it was easy to miss that in the emails, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a, a little bit of message issue. But I mean, you know, I really wasn't paying attention. Other than I was just using freely, you know, day to day reading things. Um, it, it, but I, I do like it. It kind of crosses over some of the functionality of Reader and uh, the visual stuff from uh, Flipboard, at, at least on the iOS devices. It really does kind of replace. I'm usually, usually, most of the time when I'm reading news, I'm flipping through on the phone. And it, like that, it has to work really well there and have a nice interface when I, I pop over to uh, the desktop. Uh, so on the phone, you don't have any trouble keeping track of like, like the, I've got my groups of lists, like mm -hmm. my, I don't know, my lists of feeds. And I, I have not quite mastered, like, I haven't with the thumb navigation, like I can flip. Yeah, sure. Fine. But I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Now I'm in my Pittsburgh group when I meant to be in my mm -hmm. media group well, or, you know, like that. I kind of trip into the groups and not, I'm not sure what's It depends where. on what you do. Cause it is a little confusing cause they have it today when you first boot it up and I've had some issues where I go in there and it's like, okay, did I go through everything or is it just going through today? Like what is, what do I get when I go through today? And when I go through all, um, I almost never just kind of flip through the first thing. Cause, um, 
because all my lists are alphabetical, so I have the big people list, which is all articles I want to sit down and you know read through, like the Seth Godin's and the and the uh, uh, who else, uh, 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 Gary Vaynerchuk's and stuff on there. Uh, like that's like stuff I want to actually like absorb a little bit. I'm not flipping through headlines, uh -huh. kind of seeing what's interesting out there. So I just toss out, and I have a technology group or a wrestling group or a. Uh, I have, a, I have a, a geek group or Pittsburgh group, and I just pop into who, what section. No, but of shouldn't the it newsletter? let you say, "Here's the group I want to look at first, rather than it always taking you to today or always taking you to all first? That's that's kind of my thing. If you're always the minute you go there going somewhere, you should be able to say, "This is my home." True, you know? true. But I don't know. That's that's one of the things where it's like, well, this is the way the app works. I, I it doesn't bother me. Uh, to have mm -hmm. to make that extra step to go where I want to go. I think you know? you're extra flexible on this. I think that this <laughs> is this is the kind of thing though that trips people up. So hopefully they'll notice. Like I don't know what kind of. I'm sure they're. I mean, first of all, I'm just so glad that they're doing something. Yes. So thank God. Them, yes. You know, and and definitely, if they, they got this many people yeah. into it, they're going to get a lot of noise from people that have preferences like you and everybody else or any other problems. And uh, and we'll see how how flexible. Like, because I've never heard of Feedly before this whole thing. So, mm. um, I, I take it by the silence. Are we the only two here using RSS readers? Are, are no, no, I, I was waiting for you guys to stop talking. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, too, am a, a Feedly hipster. Okay. Um, I, I jumped ship as soon as uh, Google announced that they were uh, shutting down Reader because I was in a panic. Mm -hmm. um, and until today, I've never had a problem with Feedly. Really? However, now that Google shut down Reader, I have a problem with Feedly. Okay. <laughs> because I can't open my Feedly because it's over capacity. Oh, that is new. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't organize my stuff in the list because it's all one category, and that's video games. Okay. Um, so I don't take the time and break it down. I And honestly, I, I open it up. It'll give me an article. And if I want to read that article, I read it. If not, I swipe to the next one. But you, you, but it kind of works because you have just one task. You have the video games, you know. Right. I mean, I know I have, you know, obviously like the different topics that we do for these podcasts and other interests, you know. Um, and, and Cindy, I imagine you, you kind of have a similar situation too. Yeah, I'm mostly when I go to look at my RSS feeds, I'm looking to escape work. So that's yeah. kind of how I go. <laughs> there you go. What about you, John? Are you uh, are you a uh, uh, Still I haven't person. switched. I've been waiting to find out what everyone's going to use. Obviously, it's Feedly. Um, I've been using Google Reader up until I checked it yesterday just to see if it was actually down. And uh, I actually tweeted to find out what people were switching to. I asked, and I got no responses. So I thought, I guess no one's using RSS anymore. I thought I was what the last one. What time of day did you tweet? Know. Yeah, what when did you, you tweet? What, did, what was the question? When? When did you tweet? When? I, it was um, a couple weeks ago. What time of day? <laughs> um, four in the morning. I don't know. It was a normal time. <laughs> time that people it, are It awake. couldn't have been a normal time because I read all of my tweets. Every single one of them, apparently. <laughs> we relish your tweets. I, I, I asked, and um, I actually started to think that maybe other people didn't feel this was that RSS was, was necessary it, it anymore, so and I wasn't sure... It, and, and, what we were doing for our news. And the journalists, like, like they're talking about this on some of the other podcasts, think that they're the only ones that use this anymore. You know, mm. And we're not, I mean, I don't think we're journalists or anything like We just like keeping up on the news. And it, people, I, I think the general thought is uh, everybody gets their news from Twitter. Everybody gets their news right. from Facebook and, and stuff like that. I couldn't stand the idea of getting my news from Twitter because then, I well, not that, like, this whole dipping in idea kind of makes sense, but I kind of still, in certain instances, want to check out all the news from the last time I checked in on the news. If I right. don't get into, like, I have a busy week, I don't think about checking the wrestling news for, like, three days. I don't want to be out that news because I wasn't on Twitter or something or missed that through that flow of information. Um, I I, I, it's, I, it's a I different still way cannot of believe that they that Google doesn't see a market opportunity. I literally cannot. That is like the first misstep I've seen them take. Like this is a huge market that they're just saying, "Ah, eh, fuck it." The, way, the weird, the weird thing, the weird thing is, um, um, uh, the weird thing is, I, I, I feel like they should be at least 
nudging us over to Google Plus. That seems to make sense. I feel like if done right, I could go to Google Plus and get all the same news, right? I can go follow The Verge and WrestleZone and 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 Mashable on that and, and, and just get my news that way. Like if I followed them on Twitter and they, they tweeted out their stories, right? Um, but they're not even kind of making that uh, suggestion, it seems. Um, let me yeah. see. I, I don't even think. Did they even mention it on... Well, I'm going to pull up the Google Reader page. Uh, and, yeah, there is no notice of, hey, yeah, this is gone. Um, maybe you should do what you're doing here on Google+. Plus. You know. Well, um, here's, my, here's my problem with it. Uh, one, I would stop using the internet <laughs> before I used Facebook to gather any type of news. No, and I don't think it is. I don't think... I, 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 I think I think moms and grandmas are, are the ones that are using Facebook for their news. But they're, kind, secondly, of, they're kind of AOLing it with uh, Facebook these days. Yeah. On Twitter, you tend to follow like-minded people. Yeah. The problem with that for me is uh, if I'm following you on Twitter and we're like-minded, uh, you're not going to tweet something because 14 other people already have. Yeah, true. So, true. my people aren't tweeting links very often, mm-hmm. unless they're unless they're including some kind of snide uh, side comment to go <laughs> with the link. It, it's just one of those things that's not happening. Yeah, or I don't agree with you. Therefore, I'm not going to read the links that you send out because well, you're wrong because I don't agree with you. Yeah, I mean, was it really any difference than like having an RSS feed? By these are the sites that I like and I agree with. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, not really. I follow sites I don't like just mm-hmm. to get their viewpoint on the news. There you go. There you go. Um, because I, uh, like we've discussed before, uh, uh, video game news, like everything else, is opinionated, and it it angers me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't care what your opinion on said console is. I want you to tell me about said console. Mm-hmm. So in order to, see, to, to find a happy medium, I kind of have to follow... Um, the PlayStation sites and Xbox sites, just so I can get the the balance, I guess. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I would stop using the internet before I checked Facebook for any kind of news. <laughs> Alex says he still misses Google Wave. Um, <laughs> Google Wave, yeah. You know, like, there was some potential in Google Wave. I think, I think, I think nobody came up with the killer application of how to use it quick enough. Right. But Google Reader, like, that was, it was useful. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing, right? So, I, maybe not useful enough. Maybe it wasn't getting that It was useful. Massive... No, they couldn't figure out how to make money off it. That's the only reason they could possibly have dumped it. I guess. Or maybe... I, I stand by it. You know what we need to go back to? Hmm. Plurk. Plurk. There needs to be, <laughs> there needs to be a good app for Plurk. Is this, is this our yearly time where we try to bring back Plurk? No, no, I'm not going to try to bring it back again because there's no useful app for it. But if someone were to v- to develop a useful app for Plurk, then I think people would get on board again. I feel like Plurk was like the improvement, like the better alternative to Facebook, not the better alternative to Reader or Twitter. It was more we'll like those medium length kind of you know little social interactions and conversations, whereas Twitter. I- Twitter is like more. Here's something real quick. Goodbye. And Facebook I always is called more. Clark the uh, Twitter RPG. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll buy that because it had the gamification to it. Yes. And, yeah. And wasn't it more but, visual than anything else? Like I think yeah. I feel like it beat um, it beat to the punch what we're having with Google Plus and Facebook now, where it's a very vi- be, trying to become a very visual medium um, as well as informational. Although its visuals maybe didn't look too good i mean you know it was very stylized it was yeah. very stylized their visual mechanism was this crossway kind of thing um which you know you kind of think about it it had that kind of endless scroll just the wrong way compared to our pinterest type <laughs> scroll today that we get lost in i i yeah. lose like an hour on certain communities on Google Plus, and it's the reason I stay away from Pinterest to begin with, and it followed me to Google Plus. Uh, I get most of my news from Pinterest. How does that work? <laughs> I, I know nothing about what's going on in the world, but I can <laughs> throw a fabulous wedding. You can throw a fabulous <laughs> wedding, and you have all of the recipes for the reception, too, right? I have so many cookie recipes. It's <laughs> delicious. 
You can put together no, not an delicious outfit Pinterest. in two posts. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's all about where you... The, where, the where show you. title is I Can Throw a Fabulous Wedding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, we had a... Uh, I want to try to pull this up here. Actually, wait on another story. And I actually got an awesome thing of the week from the chat room that I want to get in here uh, from Alex. So, uh, Cindy, uh, here, we'll go to another one you had. I, I remember this. This was a big story last week. Uh, Facebook is uh, kind of got, got, us, got in a little bit of trouble last week. Yeah, Facebook, um, you know, suddenly just, hey, shit, I'm so sorry, but we are going to, like, give everybody each other's privacy information all at once. So, um, so, so it's, an, it's kind of amazing, first of all, to remember that Facebook is just kind of programmed in PHP. It, you know, so apparently we could write a replacement for it in a weekend or two if we really, really tried. But more than that, it's kind of interesting that they um, – don't seem to have the kind of checks and balances between like here's our test version of something and then here's our release version that you would expect kind of or at least I assume that because they released a bug that allowed the software to stash phone and email data in other people's profiles. So I don't know. It's a it was kind of a it was a big big thing that like nobody cared about. <laughs> that's kind of a, well. That's we, kind of although maybe message. we should Nobody have. Nobody gave you know? a shit that their that their co- private contact information went out to the internet. Um. Yeah. It was. was well, we know Facebook kind of. They're known for iterating, right? Like they change so much. It's like, oh crap, what's changed this week? They have to do this thing. Where they put it, right? Um. I think this is going to happen, and I think that's kind of scary when people are dealing with your privacy like this, right? Hmm. So. I think we have uh, we really don't have any I when I say we the larger society like really doesn't think about what what privacy and networking and Facebook all means like everybody was all with the NSA I'm gonna bring up the NSA thing let's hope that the podcast does not go down while I talk the NSA and I are our buds. Yeah, We're good. Gonna, okay. you, you tweet them all the you're time. You're going to protect us. Oh, thank God. But so everyone was all like, well, I don't have anything to hide. You know, all I'm t- tweeting is pictures of, you know, dinners and brunches and, you know, friends. Well, the point is not the content of your posts and emails and all these things. The, the point is, who are you connected with? Who are they connected with? And then if somebody in that network is targeted or is in some way indicated, indicted or, in, you know, implicated in something, then you are connected to them by, you know, less than six degrees of separation. I mean, people don't really realize the implication of looking at the number of times that you talk to the same person. Apparently no one else watches NCIS. It's kind of what I'm boiling it down. Well, <laughs> my whole thing, and, and I don't, I'm not, I, I'm not trying to disagree with you uh, because you're right. I, the degrees of separation is not that great. And it would look suspicious if you're, uh, say, tweeting, a known terrorist 47 times per day. Mm-hmm. However, at the same time, if you're not tweeting or emailing or sending the terrorist li- uh, um, recipes for napalm, then... I thought you were going to really, say cookies. <laughs> no, then I mean you really don't have some... Recommendations for their wedding. Yeah, right. You really don't have anything to worry about. No, because, I don't I mean, feel, No, I know that that is not true. We, we know that that's not true because, I mean, I, I support our, uh, you know, our legal systems, and at the same time, they fuck up. They really do screw up very often. And, you know, you can be, you can find yourself, you know, having to, you know, bring in a lawyer and say, this is my lawyer, you know, to cover you with, without, without ha- you having done anything at all. It's the same sort of thing where if they bring you in for questioning, you should say, I need a lawyer, even if you don't. You have done nothing wrong because what you say can be held against you. Mm-hmm. That's what we know. That's what the Miranda law says, you know, and it's the same way on Twitter. And we feel like if I do it on not Twitter, but social media, you say, if I did it online, it's not the same thing. It is. Mm-hmm. Is that making any sense? I feel like I'm getting so impassioned. I'm talking. No, no. I, I, I am a little you mean, but I, you I mean, at the same yeah. time, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I am completely desensitized to the entire situation because uh, like you guys, I've spent a lot of time online. Um, I, I expect no privacy because I have spent a lot of time online. And, and I think and, we're, we're very different people. I mean, I mean, I think all four of us, well, geez, all four of us here have some kind of brand we're portraying for whatever reason. I mean, uh, you know, three of us have our own companies, and Chachi, you 
are doing your thing. Uh, so I, I think we definitely have a different perception. You're, you're not afraid of what the, what the NSA is going to find, but I we don't represent the normal pe- person. Um, no. But I mean, but I mean, it's one of those that you want to say what the normal person does. You know, my grandfather, you know, is worried about you know using his credit card online and in Facebook privacy and everything. Yet he completely uh, gave uh, you know uh, 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 his credit card on the phone to one of those hijacked malware guys in India uh, three times. So I mean, oh, we definitely God. have a privacy problem here. That that the people understanding it and knowing what to look for, he trusted that because a number popped up on a screen. And yet, you know, and I had to have the conversation explain, like, well, isn't that funny how they were able to get into your system so so easily to fix the problem, you know? Um, no, it, it's an education problem. And I've had this problem with social media for a while, where it is an education issue to the point where we don't know what, what all our information plugging in is there. We don't understand that. Look at how people, look at how high schoolers are treating it. You know, yeah. um, I went I went to the security like symposium last week, and I sort of talked about security and and social media and um, how you can be hacked and how you can get yourself unhacked. But mm-hmm. they had an FBI guy there who talked about how your credit card number can be stolen and then is sold for one dollar or five dollars or whatever. These huge packets of credit card numbers are then passed around, you know, to the highest bidder. You know, actually not even the highest bidder. To you know, frankly, it's fairly cheap to get a whole you know a thousand credit card numbers. Sell to somebody else, and then they're going to charge like a dollar fifty every month or something. Yeah, no big deal for you. When they do that for a thousand people, they make a lot of money. Yeah. So, and it isn't even just like being sold online. It's they um, some by some wait staff at a restaurant at, before they run your credit card for real. They run it through their little reader. Yeah, and this this is yeah. throughout our society. We're just really reliant on these networks, and we don't really know how it all works. Mm. I, I sound like a conspiracy. Like you would think I had a tin hat on at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I started kind of getting peace today because I got to notice that I, and I probably a few of you gamers, I'm trying, I don't know if you did because uh, I know you're playing some of the same games I am, but Ubisoft sent out a notice today about uh, hey, uh, we think we got hacked. Uh, here's some precautions, yet yeah, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It sounds like it's the pl- like the PlayStation thing, and it's like really to the point where like I have to play a video game and worry about like what happened to my password and potentially my credit card. I can't remember if I gave them my credit card. This is how bad it is. How many services I'm a part of, right? Um, but that's I mean I'm not worried about Ubisoft because I don't think I bought anything through their service. But you know Sony or anything like that. You know it, it, everybody wants us to be online and give us their information, but. You know, is a game company up the snuff to protect our privacy, or are these hundreds of little iPhone apps and and say something with me's and with OK goes and everything? You know, do they really have the security uh, in the right place? You know, uh, but you know, it's uh, it, you can you can hide you know hide all your money in mattresses, or you can just kind of go with it, and you know, anybody can like I said do that with your credit card. You know, good luck to go in cash only these days, right? So, hmm. won't work. All right, I have an interesting one that uh, Mr. Cars from over there in Cali sent. Um, oh, the feed's having problems now that we mentioned the NSA. He says. Uh, <laughs> hey, we started about well, we started talking what about the H, the FBI last week and the the everything. The whole house went down. Um, so he sent this interesting thing, and I'm just kind of kind of wrapping my head around it here uh, as we were talking about things. It's called listener with no vowels. As Web 2.0 goes, right? Uh, L-I-S-T-N-R dot com. Um, apparently, this is kind of like an app service kind of thing um, where in here, I'll bring it up, uh, their little handy graphics here. Um, apparently, what it does is it, 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 it lets an artist send out this frequency along their audio uh, or like, you know, at a concert or something. And your app will actually pick up this like kind of extraneous frequency, identifies it. And now you've received extra exclusive content from the artist. So this takes me back to uh, that idea of subliminal messages being embedded in the music in the department store. Uh, <laughs> but but kind of in a cooler way. Uh, so uh, I, I I don't know. It, it, that's kind of cool. I, I could see something like Live Nation or somebody pushing this thing through there if, they, if it picks up that kind of steam. Uh, I, I don't know if it would or not. Uh, but that that's an interesting. So basically, like we're all kind of hearing this special coded message 
through whatever music and even in a live show and then we can just like see this you know if we have the app on our phone see it pop up and now we got like you know maybe an extra track for going to see the lincoln park concert or something like that uh what do you think chachi as a music listener yourself what do you think of uh you know th- this idea of uh, I, I'm fans. still trying to wrap my head around you making a Josie and the Pussycat doll reference. I did. Uh, oh, well, that was from that movie. <laughs> um, I, I'm back there still. That's where I learned about that. Okay. Um, That's like my brother Anthony's favorite movie, by the way. Just, <laughs> Ooh, that movie, I, I'm not bashing that movie. I'm just trying to wrap my head around the oh, fact that he remembered that movie. No, um, apparently, apparently that movie subliminally uh, <laughs> let the idea in my head because I didn't even know what the hell you were talking about, but I, I remember now. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I enjoy the flick because of the subliminal messaging. <laughs> it's uh, hilarious. Wasn't it all um, like, just like but, buy Pepsi or something like that? But, uh... Well, no, I mean, it, it, it's all through the movie. Like, that's the joke of the movie. Yeah, yeah. But um, it, it, I don't mind. If they want to send me <laughs> exclusive content over a frequency, they're going to anyhow. Yeah. We should have been no, able to predict I, that just, from our just, previous discussion there. You, you're you just going to buy in, I think. I'm all on board. <laughs> um, there's no such thing as privacy anymore. I don't mind. Um, I have nothing to hide. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what it boils down to. Um, if they want to send me stuff because I, I paid money to go to their show and I happen to have a cell phone with a certain app on it, then uh, I, I kind of knew what I was getting into uh, when I installed the app. So uh, You have to have the app. So you've agreed when you right. agree. I, I, I mean, everything else that I install asks me if I want push notifications. Um, so, I mean, that's all it is. It's just a push notification, basically. Until, until anybody else got to this point where they, they're like, oh, every app is letting me know. Like, really, the He-Man game does not need to let me know I need to come back and defeat Skeletor every day, you know? Right. Uh, I, I just, uh, game? What's that? There's a He-Man game? Yeah, there's a He-Man game on I- on iPhone. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, they have a She-Ra uh, 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 extra levels that they released a couple oh, weeks ago. Not a oh, She-Ra dude. fan. Not a Shira fan. I mean, I got you. Got to accept. I accept it as the whole canon. I'm really, ta- I'm really, I'm really unhappy they didn't get to the Shira part in the reboot. But that's a whole other story. And the reboot was so good. Oh yes, yes, it's on Netflix. I actually bought it on DVD like a year before they put it on Netflix. My but only gripe. I, I mean, it was like perfect. My only gripe was the sword. You know, they messed up the sword. Really? Yeah, they changed the sword. But everything else was so right with that show. Um, and, and Chachi, I found Josie and the Pussycats with you. I'll send you the link to sh- 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 so you can see where you can watch it. Oh, sweet. Yes. Um, so, I'll probably watch it tonight. I need, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I didn't want to. I want to rewatch this. It was right. It was like a great movie for all the right and wrong reasons. Right. Uh, RSS feeds Skeletor every day. Is our t- show title recommendation, by the way. Um, <laughs> all right. Be a Skeletor wedding. Skeletor. Fabulous Skeletor wedding, perhaps. <laughs> the visuals, the visuals. Uh, hey guys, I fix it Liberation Day this week, or this week, uh, the Liberation Week, something like that. I fix it is going to give away um, 1,776, get it? iPhone uh-huh. Liberation kits. So, they had an update today that they were gone in 16 minutes. No way! Uh, so, okay, so that's gone. That's old news. But still, the concept is cool. The concept is very cool that they are like I am like so chicken about you know break you know freeing my phone mm-hmm. I, or I'm just you know <laughs> liberating your liberating your devices. That, that <laughs> that's the no, no I'm not making that joke. Um, but no, it, it's a it's a it's a setup that has uh, uh, some special screwdrivers because you know we have this like what was it six sided screws on these things. Uh, that's that's kind of hard to service. It actually, I think it comes with replacement screws, so you can go ahead and do that. So if something happens and you need to service your own iPhone, you can go ahead and do it. Now, I'm still under my Apple Care, so I'm okay with not doing that. But I can see people that maybe get themselves, uh, you know, the unlocked phone so they can jailbreak and put it on T-Mobile or something. Although you really don't have to do that anymore, uh, or 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 other services. I mean, there's reasons for people to want to do this. There are people that do want to service their own phone. I know, uh, like Rob, for instance. I think he had to do it 
uh, to several of his phones because he would have issues where he got like dust and stuff from where he's working around into him and have to like fix the button and clean it out and stuff. So I mean, I understand there's a reason for it, uh, you know. But for me, uh, I mean, the thing I think the whole reason I got an iPhone is so I can walk in the store and say, "Fix it, please." You know, and, and they do, and they hand me a new phone, and I sit there, and they let me play Angry Birds while I wait and stuff. And it's fabulous, you know. Um, I, I I love the experience. Uh, so I, but no, but I understand. I think it's really awesome they did this. Uh, I fix it a really good place. I, I've had a couple of. Uh, Chachi, actually, you, I think I gave you. I, I, I looked into like like how do you replace a hard drive in this thing? And iFixit is a great site for giving you step by step instructions. And 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 they sell, and that's how they make their money is they sell those tools that you would need those specialized tools like these six size screwdriver if you want to do this you know or, or spongers or something like that you know if you need to pry open the back of an iMac um so they're really cool if you do have like like some apple hardware that you need the service uh that's kind of the place to go and i think they're the ones that do teardowns like whenever a new device comes out and you always hear about like somebody tore it down and and uh uh you know told you what parts are into and how much you know they think it costs like for them to manufacture like they're they're some of those guys i've seen them like take apart an iphone like a day after it was released and put it back together working like on on some podcasts before so so definitely a cool thing it does say here that even though the completely free ones are gone they are they're you know, glad that people were so excited about it in those 16 seconds. So they will until July 5th, which I guess is Friday. Um, they'll ship you a kit if you pay for shipping. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely something people uh, would get into. So awesome. Uh, let's uh, pick up one more here. Uh, why is hands-free texting dangerous? Because you're, well. you're you keep checking. <laughs> Uh, the problem is it may be hands-free, which means you're talking to your phone. Yeah. But you you have to – you're looking at your screen anyhow to make sure it uh, translated what you said correctly. Yeah, see, that <laughs> – So you're spending just problem. as much time, if not more, looking at your screen mm -hmm. instead of the road. And they're going to post whatever you were texting on the news after you die. So you really want to make sure that it's important and not – Right. It's spelled right. Do you have the commas in their proper place? You know. <laughs> I mean, look at the texts that were being sent when people died. They're never, they're never interesting. They're never important. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I'll be home in a little. I mean, you know, look at look at all those commercials of uh, people uh, ruining someone else's life because they were texting and driving. Mm -hmm. right. And it's always stuff like "On my way," "Are you going?" Mm -hmm. "See you soon." Yeah, and like you. Couldn't have taken 10 seconds before getting into the car to let them know that you were on your way or, I mean, at least send them a, a, a nude selfie or something. And while you're driving? Just to make it worth it. While you're driving? I mean. No. no I, yeah. I mean, if you're going to go out, go out huge. <laughs> Yeah, it, it turns from man, man, man dead from texting while driving to man dead while taking own pants off in car in rush hour traffic. Uh, that's definitely a different story. Um, when you think though about the way your brain, I mean, when you think about having a, a, you have a heated conversation with somebody in the car, and that makes it a little bit hard to drive. But when you're apparently when you're composing a, a text, even if I mean, even if it's just a text, not just an email. Your brain is focused on that, and, and you know your eyes maybe even drift up or off the road. I mean, you think you're looking forward, and you're not. So yeah. apparently, it's using a different part of your brain, a different level of your consciousness, according to this article, anyway, according to the study. So, so that's really kind of a big part of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's even like more dangerous to, uh, than having a phone that, um, conversation or listening to an audiobook. Mm -hmm. Good. I, I would just like to take a, a moment to point out that we don't actually suggest that you uh, try to take a nude selfie while driving. <laughs> A little bit of a disclaimer. In, in, case, yes. in case you needed that to be said. Um, yeah, you won't be able that. to frame it properly. The lighting will be bad. Yeah. Yeah, well, like Chachi really said, if you're going to take a nude selfie, go out big. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, if you're going to text while drive, I mean, make it something worthwhile. That's all I'm saying. Jeez. Not on my way. <laughs> oh, my God. Where did this go? <laughs> then again, then again, honestly... If you have to triple check to make sure that your phone uh, correctly translated the text on my way, 
Yeah. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it's time you stop using uh, the uh, voice commands. We've been using the voice, the Siri kind of tweet thing uh, uh, lately between me and my wife, and, and she just like kind of lets it go. You know, it's like whatever goes, go whatever sentence sends, and if it doesn't make sense, I'm like, why did you send me something like like? She's gonna kill me for this one. She sent me like I have to pee. I'll be along, and it like it said like the letter P, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, that was so cute when you 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 you, you use the letter P. It's like no, no, I was using Siri, and that's how it came out. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> So, uh, on that note, uh, guys, this has been a great episode. It's been a fun episode. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being on. Cynthia Klosky, big, big design at Cynthia Klosky. Anything else? Uh, oh, your, your blog as well. My blog, my blog is mybrilliantmistakes.com. Mm-hmm. I'm there. And uh, if you wanted to see me in person and you're in the Pittsburgh area, come to the Steel City Improv on July 12th at 9 p.m., and I will be on stage making shit up uh, without um, really much prompting. Awesome. John, blah, blah. John Carmen at Carmen Avenue, AvenueDesignStudios.com. Anything else you want to put out there? Uh, well, everyone else should probably know this. Josie and the Pussycats is unavailable to stream. Aww. So I'm going to have to do something else. <laughs> I know the NSA is listening, so. <laughs> Chachi, who probably owns Josie and the Pussycats, is at insertcointobegin.com. At Chachi says on the Twitters. I don't yet, but give it give it a little bit. I'll own it by the end of the night. It's going to be I, on Google Play. I think, it, I think, <laughs> oh, you're going to buy it. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, yes, I, insert coin to begin. Uh, Chachi says on Twitter, if you don't follow me, you probably should. I'm, Probably the most interesting person, other than the people on the show with me. Awesome. <laughs> See what I did there? Yes, I yes. Took, I took credit for being amazing on Twitter, but I didn't insult everyone else. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and I'm at Sorgatron. Sorgatron.com is my blog. I've been posting some stuff over there. And all the rest of the show is over at SorgatronMedia.com. Sign up for the newsletter. We're getting that going again, so you know everything going on uh, on the network every week. At least that's the promise. Uh, me, I'm probably going to make a, another trip down to the exchange and see the girl look at me funny when I ask for Josie and the Pussycats. Because, uh, well, then Chachi had told, this, told you this, but I, I asked for hackers, and she asked if it was in the horror section. Wow. I, I informed her of her mistake and how she needs to really put this on her watch list. Um, um. Yeah. Uh, she's probably too young to give a crap. Uh, anyways, it's the awesome cast. Uh, again, send us your comments. I'm sure there's a lot you have something to say about on this episode. Contact at awesomecast.com. Uh, hit us up on Google Plus, Facebook, and at awesomecast on Twitter. Uh, if you can, hashtag it AC156 for comments about this episode so we can track those down as well. Uh, so with that, thanks to our chat room, live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us there every week, 7 p.m. Eastern time is when about we start this and you can join the rest of the shows throughout the night that we do on this evening that's not my show that i just brought up no and remember folks don't take nude selfies and drive Less of the day. thank you awesome chat room you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week and don't take nude selfies while driving <laughs>